So I'm waiting for like the intro. <laughs> That's the underwriter screen. So that runs for 15 seconds. Well, hello and welcome to Rogue Artisans and Crafters. Our show is about featuring local artists and craftspeople from within Southern Oregon. We'll talk to our featured artists about how they came to their art, what drives them as artists, find out stories behind their art, their art process, and how their work as artists influences their lives. Today we have the privilege of featuring local photographer and illustrator Roy Musatelli. I found Roy and his work while visiting the Art de Jure Gallery in Medford. I found his work outstanding and I'm pleased to be able to introduce Roy and his work to our audience. So Roy, welcome to the show. Thank you David, it's an honor to be here. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you think so. So this is, our, this is pretty new for me and, and for what we're trying to do and I'm happy to be able to uh, to give features to, to wonderful artists here in Southern Oregon such as yourself. Well, thank you, David. And, and uh, as I alluded to before, uh, anything I can do to help promote the Art Du Jour Gallery has uh, sort of been the focal point for me. And, yeah, uh, well, it's a wonderful gallery, yeah. and, and um, uh, it's a favorite spot for me every time I'm downtown. Well, wonderful. So, yeah. yeah, it has a lot of wonderful artists, including yourself. So, uh, so we want to talk about uh, your work as a photographer, you're both a photographer and an illustrator. Mm -hmm. And so I want to kind of begin with um, how you came into your life as a photographer and, uh, and how that started for you. Okay, essentially, David, when I was, I was drawing ever since I was old enough to carry a pencil. So right. uh, when I was just out of high school, I discovered that everything seemed a lot easier with a camera, yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, and and I uh, instantly fell in love with the wet dark room, uh -huh. you know, and putting my hands in all those chemicals. It was just you know lovely stuff, and that really is where I knew that I had found my niche yeah, in right. terms of being able to express my art. Yeah. Uh, from there, I, I got uh, mixed up with some people that were starting up a, a weekly newspaper, right. and uh, it, it just seemed like a, a natural for me mm -hmm. to be able to. Uh, express what I was, uh, what I was seeing, what uh, people that I was meeting, being able to do that and, and record it in a way that uh, words couldn't express. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, my, in my way of thinking, it, it kind of puts wheels to a story. Mm -hmm. uh, About what age were you when you got in, when you discovered that photography process? I was, uh, I uh, had just gotten married yeah. uh, to my lovely wife, Kathleen. Uh, and uh, we, uh, uh, it was age 19. Yeah, okay. uh, and then uh, at that, around that time, I discovered that I wanted to uh, uh, venture off. So we took the bold step of moving to Seattle. Yeah, okay. and, and this is where I, I uh, started uh, taking the, the modest portfolio that I had with me and, and uh, ventured out and, and found a, a place uh, that was a little bit of a step up. It was a weekly. Uh, community newspaper group and they needed a darkroom technician. Yeah, right. and, well, I've got the darkroom thing down. So yeah. uh, essentially for a while all it meant that I was uh, cleaning up the work of uh, reporters who were carrying cameras right. with them at that time. And uh, once they discovered that I was able to uh, take better pictures than most of those reporters, <laughs> uh, they, they pretty much decided that it was better to have me as, as their full-time shooter. Yeah. You know? Uh, people always raise an eyebrow when I refer to myself as shooters, but uh, 
it quite quickly became apparent when I was working around all the other photographers in the Seattle media that that's what we refer to ourselves yeah, right. as. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. that's a classic uh, terminology. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, goes back a long ways in photography. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, I always laugh when I when I say that, you know, because I, I do get the raised eyebrow from people, and I, I say, yeah, I'm a shooter, and yeah. then they kind of, you know, well, <laughs> well, what do you shoot? I say, well, people. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. And so yeah, and so you basically start out in photojournalism, uh, with your photography. Correct. And how long did you do uh, photojournalism? Uh, I, I advanced through the stages. I was in the Seattle area for about five years working with that uh, small media group. And then I uh, moved to, uh, got an opportunity to go to Yakima, Washington. Uh -huh. And that was where my journalism career really pretty much took off. I, I started taking it more seriously and, and think of it in terms of this is people's source right, for information. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, and uh, it, I, I started studying uh, photojournalism more in depthly. I started looking at uh, magazines, you know, and, and really trying to get a grasp of what I was trying to do on a local level right. was to emulate what I was seeing there. Yeah. You know? uh, and to have an artistic background really helped because that's just the way yeah, well, you see you, things. You, yeah, I mean, you develop in all. In all areas of art, I mean, you do it uh, enough, you develop a certain eye to what you like and to how you see things. Uh, and that comes across once you get in, into, into one area of art, it, it follows through on everything that you do art-wise. Correct. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now, in, the, what, in your photojournalism work, what were, were there like favorite subjects that you uh, really enjoyed pursuing over others? I mean, well, of course, my whole life had been uh, devoted to sports when yeah. I was a kid, and, and I gravitated to that uh, uh, quite strongly, because that was the reason I wanted to get into this yeah. business, was to be able to get on the sidelines of yeah. those games. Uh, so it, it naturally, that's where uh, most of my career was, was focused in, in yeah. that, that uh, arena. However, there were a few other stories that I got to work on over the years. Uh, 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 I was very close to veterans-related issues, right. and I also uh, really enjoyed working on environmental uh, yeah. uh, issues. And a lot of my work now is very environmentally oriented. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I've seen like some of your coastal images and mm -hmm. stuff at the gallery, uh, uh, and uh, been really uh, kind of blown away by uh, by the action that you capture out of out of Mother Nature. So. Uh, that's something that I've really impressed me, and uh, well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And uh, and I've you know and I've I've worked as a photographer myself, and and, and you know and, and that that work, uh, that role is something that gives you access to activities and events that a lot of other people uh, don't get such access to. So uh, I understand how that gets it kind of kind of fuels uh, a desire uh, to continue more because of the access that you get. Uh, I, I always felt that, you know, it did open a lot of doors for me when I was working as a photojournalist, but in a lot of ways, I think a lot of doors closed suddenly when, you know, it was known that I was uh, part of the media, and then I realized, <laughs> boy, I, I really should be in there right yeah, now. You right, know? Yeah. But, you know, you just, I, I learned how to function within that environment. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, got to see a lot of what I consider to be a front row seat to a lot of really yeah. interesting uh, things. And you see, you're watching history as it yeah. develops. And, yeah. Uh, so uh, doing it on a local yeah. level, I think, is, is much more intimate than what the people in, in the national yeah. media witness. Cause, you know, I'm neighbors of those That's people, right. yeah. you know, and, and what goes on in their lives, you know, happens to me too. Yeah. yeah. Well, we happen to have a group of, of your photography images uh, to bring up uh, and kind of talk a little bit about uh, mm -hmm. some of the stories behind them. Mm -hmm. And so if our uh, uh, control room can kind of load up, we have some images uh, here behind us and we'll 
uh, we'll kind of talk about some of them. Um, and so if we can kind of we'll start uh, with this one and kind of, this is like a photojournalism story that you did is my understanding, okay. correct? Yeah. Uh, when I was at the Yakima Herald Republic in uh, Yakima, Washington, uh, I got teamed up with a uh, reporter by the name of Matt Cooper. And uh, the features editor at the time was also a very good friend of ours, recognized the fact that Matt and I worked together very yeah. well. It was like Matt would think like a photographer and I would think like a writer and, and we would kind of get that really nice blend that mm -hmm. you're looking for in feature right. stories. Yeah. But we, we uh, followed uh, this, young, this young boy, uh, I say young boy, he's probably in his teenage years, uh, had a rare disease that uh, essentially his, his muscles just didn't function the way uh, yours and mine does. Right. And, and he, it also affected his, his speech. His, his mind was clear enough to where he was able to communicate, but it was you had to really pay attention to what yeah. was going on. And uh, one of those types of things, you think it's, it's a reporter's nightmare to try to sit down and, and re do a, a legible, yeah. Uh, type of interview uh, and I, I watched Matt through all those interviews and, and witnessed the patience that it took to, to really gain an understanding yeah. of what's going on in this boy's life. Yeah. Uh, we followed him for about a month yeah. and, and it was a, a story that we, that we both were very focused on and, we, and, and uh, it, was, it was a shared deal. Yeah. So we have uh, some additional images in this story. Yeah, that we mm -hmm. can kind of go through, and um, and so let's go to the next one, and because uh, there's like uh, five of the stories that, that I pulled uh, for this uh, sequence, and uh, and I it struck me, uh, you know, in as a photojournalism uh, topic, you know, that I mean, you have to you're basically getting an intimate kind of a relationship and capturing some intimate kind of moments. That comes through the photojournalism process. That's, that's the know? goal. Yeah, that's the and, goal. And I thought that what the uh, so let's go to the next one. There was I felt like these were uh, the uh, the ones that I went through and looked at. I mean, these were ones that kind of grabbed at me uh, on an emotional mm -hmm. level, you know. And uh, I thought that they were uh, really wonderful examples of your photo photojournalism work. Uh, there's I think another one, right? So. Yeah, that's like his graduation, right? That was that was after he uh, got his graduation uh, diploma, yeah. and uh, that was the end of the story. And, yeah. and Matt and I talked about this a few times: is that we wish we could go back and, and revisit right. what his life was like yeah. after that point. But uh, you know, it's like anything: you have your own life. I have a job to do. I right. have to kind of keep focus on yeah. what's what's next, next out yeah. there. And yeah. and uh, uh, once I, I left Yakima, it became a moot point. Yeah. So, but I do think about this one from time to time because yeah. this this was a, a very heart wrenching story. For me. Yeah, it seemed like going through the photos in um, uh, of the story that uh, yes, yeah, it was definitely it looks like a really emotional kind of a of a, of a story to explore. And mm -hmm. uh, but there were really wonderful examples of photojournalism, and that's why mm -hmm. I picked the ones that I picked uh, to get us going on your on your photography well, journey. Well, thank you, yeah. thank you. So let's go to like the next uh, image in the sequence. Now what is, there's a story here, what's this story? I thought okay. that was uh, a okay. really. I shot this while I was working for the uh, Medford Mail Tribune. Oh, okay. Uh, it was for a, a cover for their tempo oh, okay. section. Yeah. And uh, this was actually at uh, Rogue Community College. There, there was a drama class, and yeah. uh, if you're going to ask me what the name of the yeah. play was, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do the recall thing. But I, uh, I, they, they all started. They got into one of the things I love about doing these kind of uh, theatrical, and since the actors all are, love to get into yeah. cast. I mean, any, anything you tell them to do, they're just yeah. they're very enthusiastic. So, uh, and once I got them doing the movement thing, and, and it all just seemed to fall together yeah. just right away. Well, it's a really fun it. portrait yeah. uh, image. I thought I, it was really, uh, I, I really think cool. It's hilarious that you pulled that one yeah. out. But I, so let's go to the next one. Okay. So this is like, a, I take it one of like your sports uh, kind of action. It is. Yeah. It is. That, that was a, uh, 
uh, state soccer championship at uh, St. Mary's oh, okay. high, high School had won. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, the joy on everybody's face just yeah. pretty much tells you what, you yeah. know, that, that says the whole story. Yeah. And uh, sometimes the best action is the reaction. Exactly, you know? yeah. And you got to be you know, ready to capture that, too. That's right, you know? yeah. Well, let's go to the next one. Now, that's okay. a wonderful... Uh, uh, coast image. So that's like, uh, I assume that's somewhere here on the Oregon coast? That, that is uh, farther up north on yeah. uh, uh, Yakina Head yeah. uh, Lighthouse, just north of Newport. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, when you see a sunset start to unfold like that, you just want to get to a place where something in front yeah. of it in the foreground can make it interesting. Yeah. And uh, I, I was on my way to that point specifically when I started seeing the clouds yeah. start, and, and I couldn't get there fast enough, yeah. you know. Then I'm just sitting there kind of trying to catch my breath, you know, so that I can hold the camera steady. Yeah. And, you yeah. know. Uh, there, there is a fair amount of Photoshopping going on that I do now that I wouldn't have done yeah. back in my journalism days, that I, yeah. I have allowed myself the, the, yeah. the freedom to do that. Yeah, yeah. there's certain, uh, there's a time and a place for Photoshop you know, uh, but I think when it comes to like photojournalism kinds of issues, that that should like really not be something brought into bear. Well, you know? it's, you know, when you cross the line from documentary into the world of art, which yeah. is where I'm, I'm yeah. more into expressing things in a different way yeah. now. Uh, yeah, photojournalism you know, images in my book should be something that the public can trust, that, that, that what they're seeing is really what's going on. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. I still wear that hat, yeah. but, but now I've, I've come around to uh, allowing myself uh, to express myself in another way. Yeah. Uh, uh, when, and when you're, seeing, when you're seeing something like that, I say, well, you know, it just doesn't look, it doesn't look real. Well, right. it, it is and it isn't. I mean, that's the way that everything lined up for yeah. me. I just happen to have yeah. the tools yeah. to be able to enhance it now. Yeah. You know? yeah. But yeah. now this is like a, a really <laughs> a little scary. But if you're into if you're scared of spiders, but I get a lot of reaction off yeah. of that one. Yeah. That was taken in Coos Bay, uh, and it, it's always raining out there. Yeah. And uh, it seems like there's a certain time of year where these spiders. Yes, spider webs are all over the place, yeah. so they're they're hard to miss. Yeah, and uh, I, I spent a little time out there, so I had plenty yeah. of opportunity. Yeah. So let's go to the next one, and this is like a okay. Yeah. That, that is a pear blossom, and that is another shot that I uh, uh, photo illustration that I did for the Mail Tribune okay. for uh, their uh, uh, tempo cover. Yeah. Okay, it was for the pear blossom festival. Yeah. All right. And, uh, Spent a fair amount of time chasing around the bees because yeah. I just thought it, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know. Well, let's, uh, let's go to the next one. Okay. Now that was, that's really, I, I just love the composition of that scene. I mean, that's just really. Okay. It, it was an interesting uh, story that I was working on for the Mail Tribune where uh, we were at this gentleman's uh, home and I looked over at his barn and it really, it had nothing to do with the story, but yeah. I, I just said, do you mind if yeah. I take that? Yeah. Just, it's just a wonderful compensation. Yeah, so let's, uh, yeah, so let's go to the next one. And I think that's the okay. last one in the sequence, so that I that Okay, shows. that also was taken while it was at the Mail Tribune. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we have to go around sometimes yeah. and just search for things. Yeah. Uh, uh, we call it Feed the yeah. Beast. Yeah. You know, you gotta fill that day's right. use hole, and, yeah. and sometimes there's not a lot to go. Yeah. Uh, well, now, in, in, since uh, you've basically, and now in recent years, you've moved from your photography into illustration work, mm -hmm. and uh, and we've got some uh, examples of that uh, mm -hmm. as well. Um, but one of the things that you brought uh, is something that's new for you is this piece here. Let's well, bring this one up. Well, I, I uh, I'm doing in my illustration work. I'm uh, discovered a new medium that's called scratchboard. Uh, yeah, so and uh, it, it's essentially taking uh, a piece of clay with with uh, it's got a coat of black ink over it, and you scratch into it. Yeah. And make, okay. You know, you're sort of working in reverse of what you normally. Yeah. So well, let's uh, let me see that for a moment, and let's see mm -hmm. if uh, we can get this uh, positioned here. 
uh, I really uh, find, I've seen other examples uh, of this kind of work at, at the national level, but you're the first artist I've seen locally doing this, and I'm really, uh, found it really a wonderful uh, uh, example of, of I've been getting a lot of interest. Yeah. A lot of interest from folks at uh, Art Du Jour. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, it's, uh, so we've got some uh, illustration examples up here on, uh, as well. So let's kind of go into the next uh, image. And these are like uh, kind of like advertising. You do like advertising style illustration work. Okay, these these are all examples of, of work that I, I when I was taking uh, some graphic design classes, yeah. at Rogue Community College, yeah. uh, and and they are. Uh, this is just sort of a study in how uh, words and, and illustration are intended to yeah. blend together. Okay, so let's go to the next one and see. Uh, some more examples. Okay, this is an example. Uh, a, uh, a church was looking for an illustration, so yeah. I, I came up with the, the uh, concept for the Potter's Hand uh, okay. that they uh, they end up using on on the, a lot of their literature. Yeah. And so let's go to the next one. Okay, uh, that was uh, that was an example from one of my. Uh, uh, figure drawing classes, yeah, okay. and, and uh, it, it was an interesting technique. We, we learned different techniques of using the pencil and, or uh, charcoal or, or uh, Conte crayon or yeah. even a, a mixture of, I haven't done much with it, but yeah. that, was, that was sort of okay, an example. So, right. so let's go to the next one. Okay, that, that is a computer generated illustration. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, using utilizing a number of sources, uh, uh, one photograph of a whale's tail that I captured in Cabo, and then another one that uh, it was, you know, it, you just yeah. start kind of blending things okay. together yeah. on the computer. To and okay, so let's go to the next one. Are you do you use like a, a tablet with your when you're doing the computer-based uh, graphics, or is it? Uh, right now, I'm I'm not that. Uh, sophisticated yeah. in, in my uh, digital imagery, okay. but this one was generated by uh, pen and ink. Okay, and, and yeah. that's if you uh, study that one closely enough, you'll see hundreds like and hundreds of, of little pots. Kind of, that's yeah. that is the the technique that yeah. I was utilizing yeah. for kind okay. of a, a whimsical uh, type of yeah. image. So let's go to the next one. Okay, that was uh, uh, when I started. First, started to develop my uh, technique using the uh, color pencil, okay. and then that was off uh, taken from a photograph that I uh, shot when I was in in Yakima. Okay. So I was actually starting to take photos that I had taken and and transfer them into illustration, which was what my uh, intent was right. okay. from the beginning. All right. So let's go to the next one. Okay, that that's another example yeah. of of a. Uh, uh, a very unique black and white photo that I took in Yakima, and uh, just it, it, it captured uh, the, uh, the photo finish. Yeah, uh, yeah. I really, that's, that's, I, I really <laughs> like that a lot, it, and it shows uh, not only the photo finish, but like it, you get a good sense of motion out of that. That you're seeing the. For me, I'm seeing the speed of the of the race right there. That yeah. that's. What's, what I was trying to accomplish by with the uh, the horizontal lines, yeah. uh, if you notice in a lot of my illustration, I'll, I'll have all my lines will be one direction, either horizontal, yeah. vertical, or sometimes yeah. I'll do them diagonally. Yeah. But, uh, okay, and uh, let's go to the next one. Okay, that's an example of scratch board. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's one of my earlier scratch board pieces. And, yeah. uh, and the next one. Okay, that, that's a, a buffalo that I uh, took pictures of up in Coos Bay yeah. and uh, uh, used graphite pencil to, to uh, uh, capture the detail. Uh, yeah. Okay, and the next one? Okay, that, that is no. uh, uh, one of my earlier examples of scratch board as well. And, uh, I was uh, <laughs> playing around with some, uh, some of my graphic design uh, and I'm having a hard time even reading what I was uh, yeah. trying to convey there, but uh, that that was one that. Uh, 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 it struck me as it, it, it struck me as there's like a, a flow of water coming out, mm -hmm. right? And uh, 
and it comes off really well, and I really uh, that really appealed to me. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's go to the next one, and I believe that's the last one in the sequence. So okay. yeah, yeah, that that was from a photo that I, I took in the autumn time up in Jacksonville, uh, and uh, it was a uh, for a class on composition, yeah. which was uh, a very important element that. Uh, artists need to understand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So is your illustration work, is that becoming a bigger part of, of what you're doing artistically uh, compared to the photography you've been doing before? I, I would say it's 50-50. Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm still a photographer and I will always be a shooter. Yeah. And, and, and that's uh, I, one of the advantages I have in being able to do both is that uh, uh, it gives me it gives me a chance to, to reach across the board yeah. and, and go from one to the other right. and say that, yeah, yeah, I did that one from start to finish, and it, that's a good feeling. Now, uh, uh, you, now, we've talked about that your work is currently viewed down at Art de Jure Gallery in correct. downtown Medford. Yes, it is. Um, if someone wants to contact you for a commission or to, to purchase your uh, examples of your, of your work, uh, how else can they find you? Absolutely, uh, through Art Du Jour is, is a good source. We're always excited to have people come in and visit us. And uh, uh, I extend that welcome to off hours. If, if you're not able to be down there uh, during our uh, hours of uh, 10 okay. to 4, I like to meet people uh, okay. just to come into the gallery. Yeah. But, uh, and you have a website? Uh, I do have a website. It's my name, all one word, okay. RoyMusatelli.com. Right. And uh, uh, there are... Uh, opportunities on there to, to buy prints okay. uh, and I also am, am very diligent in answering my email uh, so right. you can yeah. reach me through that. Well Roy I appreciate you coming in to talk about your work well, uh, and your life as an artist so I appreciate you coming in. Thank again you I thank you for the opportunity. All right. Yeah. So that ends our show. Uh, we have reached the end of our show Rogue Artisans and Crafters. And we want to thank you at home for joining us and learning about our featured artist, Roy Musatelli. I'd also like to thank Roy Musatelli for being our featured artist and appearing on our show to discuss his life and work. We also want to thank our crew who has made it possible to put our program together and to thank RVTV for their wonderful studio facility, which allows us to produce shows such as this one. If you'd like to become a studio producer and create your own public access show, you can contact RVTV to learn how. Please make sure and check out Roy Musatelli's website where you can get more information about his photography and illustration work. I'm your host, David Glamour Dave Ninow, and we will see you next time. That is the end of our show tonight.